I'm very excited today to be joined by Kyle Berkshire, long drive champion. And Kyle, something that I am struggling with in my own game. I hit it just fine off the tee, but I could really use your advice on how to get more distance out of the swing that I already have without trying to change too many things. So I'm hoping you can give me some of your excellent pointers and maybe I could squeeze out an extra, maybe, you know, five or 10 yards. I think we might be able to get a little more than 10. So hey, let's, I like let's that. see what you got. good right there okay that was I would say that's a good drive for me okay that one so right there with what do you think how plus. bad is it it's not bad <laughs> that's that's gonna be you know 173 carry it's rolling out to probably 200 plus already that so. sounds about right the biggest thing I'm noticing is you're kind of very you're very still over the ball Mm -hmm. which is not a necessarily a bad thing for consistency in shots around the green. I'd venture to say you probably have a pretty good short game because it's you have a very stable swing. And so you got to look at the distance and short game stuff as two different languages. And so the language of distance, you're trying to create as much speed as possible by displacing your weight from your starting point and then returning that weight with more momentum and power through the ball. So my biggest tip to you just starting off would be try to shift your weight more onto your trail side because you're getting you're a little stacked over. If you shift your weight more to trail side, you can then turn through and stay behind the ball and really deliver a lot more club speed to the ball. Okay. So the two things I want you to think about, shift more. So don't do this, but I want you to just kind of feel like you're making a better turn and stacking more over this right knee. The second thing I want you to think about is as you turn through, Really try to make sure all your body is behind the ball at impact so that you're in, you have a pretty straight angle from your uh, left arm through the club. Because when people start going like this, a lot of their power is already lost because they're extending their hands early. So to recap, stack a little more on your trail side. And then as you turn through, really just try to pretend like you're just trying to feel like you're staying behind that ball all with all your body and just kind of releasing those hands. So I'll take a practice swing just quickly yeah, to try to reinforce how, looks for you. this idea. That looks pretty good. Okay. Just really focus it on It feels strong. I feel like if I made contact with that swing, it would go farther. That's what I feel like sometimes too. <laughs> if I can just, if I can only hit the ball good. <laughs> That honestly that felt looked pretty good. Like better even than the other one that I hit. So that was 116 ball speed, so it's four more miles an hour ball speed just there. It's 178 carry. That's, I believe that's an extra two yards of carry already. Um, but that might be a little misleading because you hit that a bit lower, so that's probably actually going to run out more. What well, the big thing I'm looking at is the speed you're creating. That's kind of a lot more better, better of a tell. So to be four miles an hour faster in ball speed in one shot is a really good sign. That means you probably swung that about three miles an hour faster, two to three miles an hour faster uh, club speed. So that's a quick gain right there. And I think a big part of it is just you're turning a little better from the top, which means as a result, you're able to create a little more of an angle with your wrists, mm -hmm. which once the wrists unload, that speed's really gonna increase. Because wow. a lot of people don't realize that the biggest speed and this biggest point of speed ampl amplification of my swing has nothing to do with all of this stuff. It's right here. It's everything I do leading up to this point, because my wrists are in such an extreme position right here, you will literally see the lead wrist will literally be in front of my ball and the club head will still be at the height of my shoulder because all the turning and stacking I do over the ball and getting behind this ball, it creates such an extreme angle. As it come through, everything is just unloading of that ball. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're not doing that on purpose. A lot of people miss the forest for the trees where they're like, okay, well, if I can just create that wrist angle, I'll be good. But you can't do that without doing the other things. The, the wrist angle is reactive to the things we're doing right now, which is giving me that bigger turn and getting a little bit higher behind the ball. And that's all gonna lead to, and that's why you had more speed, simply because there was more of an angle created with those things. There's more of an angle created with the wrist. So the club had unloaded quicker, you know? Well, I gotta say four miles per hour right off the top. You yeah. did what you said you were gonna do. Yeah. Thank you oh, so much. Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> Should you hit one more? Think you can get a little faster? Oh, <laughs> Under Put a little pressure. pressure on you? I know. Let's see it. <laughs> that was pretty good. A little higher than the other one, but... That was launched. 
180 carry. Ooh. So getting longer and longer <laughs> every single swing. So there you go. Awesome. Try to put a little pressure Thank on you. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. This is awesome. So that looked pretty good. Oh, it so felt, that's definitely it felt rolling really out. good. Yeah. It felt really good. Well, that's the best part about it. That went long and straight too. So that'll, yeah. that'll put you in a pretty good spot off the tee. I almost feel like I take a three quarter swing is just like my natural motion. Yeah. So just that extra like extension that you encouraged was like just mentally just it felt like I was going that extra little bit. It well, and the big thing really you'll notice good. is it's not necessarily, what I'm trying to get someone to do is, I want them to have more speed without more effort. So if you get someone in better positions at the top, then just let them make their normal swing for the rest of the swing. There's gonna be more speed because the wrists are being hinged more. And so at impact, they're gonna unload more because there's a lot more of an angle stored in that wrist. And that's a big thing because that's you want speed with longevity. That's a big thing for me is I want you to be able to swing fast for the rest of your life. So if you increase the effort but don't increase the mechanical efficiency or the strength of your body, it's gonna be short-term speed. But if you have a more mechanically efficient swing, which we just kind of cleaned up a little bit, and a stronger body from lifting weights in gym, that's gonna be very long lasting speed. That's where you're gonna be in your 60s, 70s, 80s, hitting it really, really far. Well, that's my next step, protein shakes in the gym. So we'll yeah. get there. <laughs> we'll One get step there. at a time. So. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure.